Ladies and gentlemen, guys and gals, welcome to a city building doctor and I will be your doctor for today. Now, we have a map submitted by Ritesh Aurora and it's a very interesting map because it's super constrained. So it's kind of like fixing a scenario sort of thing. So let's jump into it. It's going to be Mediolanum. There's saving Mediolanum by Ritesh, which is what we're doing today. Jumping into the game, slowing the game down, getting the music going because it doesn't always auto start. Okay. This is Mediolanum. This is his map, and he made a very nice city, actually. If we look at the road placements, it's generally quite nice, very nice clean loops. Got lots of grand insulators here. But there's for Mediolanum, which has one of the largest invasions in the game, as far as I know, and it happens here in 204 BC. The first time I played through Mediolanum, I actually beat the mission before 204. But the last time I played it, where I was doing the three deep housing, if you want to see three deep housing, so houses three tiles out from the road, you can go check my new Caesar 3 playthrough. Um, but this is a very militaristic mission, and Ritesh has not built any defensive structures. So, for reference, I'm going to unpause the game, speed it up, and you're going to see this invasion and what actually happens. Let me just speed it up here. Come on. We've got one month. We've got one month before the invasion hits. And yes, Ritesh Aurora, thank you for submitting the map. So this is the invasion. It's big. It's big. That's them. That's them. That is the... Uh Carthaginians. And you see, they've got not just these infantry units, they've got these diamonds set up in the middle. Those diamonds are brutal. They just walk through your troops and destroy things. So this is this is a pretty large army. And if you see, if you just let them run, they'll wander around for a bit. So you do have a, a bit of time, right, before things actually start going down. And then they're just going to demolish everything. And when I tested this earlier, I actually saw something I've never seen before. I've never seen this cinematic before, which is about to play here. I've never seen this. Have you guys ever seen this? You get fired. Caesar doesn't get unhappy with you. He fires you. I don't know what triggers this, because if we look at favor and stuff, he's actually still happy. What? I don't know what triggers being fired. Usually, I upset Caesar and he comes invade me. But I don't know what causes this. I never, I never let it get to this point. I usually just quit and restart before that. And then I've never seen this window. I've, I've never seen this. Have you all seen this? I usually just restart before I get to this point, I think. Evil Scientist has never seen this before. See? See? Not, people usually like, oh, this is just not working and they just restart, right? They just restart it. Losing against Imperial Troops does. Yeah, so usually when Imperial Troops show up, if I see that I'm losing, I just reload or quit. <laughs> so let, let's, let's, let's go back into this. Okay, let's slow the game down. So this is how we are going to cure this city in today's city building locker. We're going to load up Ritesh's original map, pause the game. Now, there's actually one thing that I have to show you. Um, which is very, very important in very quickly getting things going, right? Because one thing we can do is we could, for example, put down some walls, right? If I just go ahead and put down some walls here and I get some towers, uh, towers. Let's say I go ahead and put a bunch of towers here, right? We'll need to have employment working here, which means we got to build houses and have a road connection to the barracks, right? If there's no road connection to the barracks, the towers will not be functioning. So there has to be a road connection. But they must first have employment, and no employees live nearby. If you just build this and wait for the immigrants to show up, they're gonna walk all the way through your city, and it's gonna take like months before they get there. Is it on very hard? I don't know actually. What is his difficulty setting? It's on very hard. It's on very hard. Um, but one thing you can take advantage of is 
these guys. The homeless. We can take advantage of the homeless. Don't take that statement out of context. You'll see, as soon as I put down those houses, immigrants don't actually show up. Well, some do. Okay, but watch this, watch this. These guys. If I go ahead and just build more houses here, they're gonna turn around and move into the houses. Don't mind that, don't mind that. We can do that, right? So for example, if I slow the game down and I like demolish a couple houses here, homeless spawn. And if I just wait for them to start moving, they might move straight. So immigrants should already show up for this. So if I put down houses here, Oh, he might be already moving over there. You can't do it too many times, right? You can't do it too many times, but you can do this, right? Let's see, you, they move out and move straight back in. They move straight back in. So we are going to take advantage of that behavior because see, those immigrants moving in, they're like here. Whereas these towers are already functioning. Right? So that's what we're gonna do. Let's load back here. Slow the game down. And we are going to wall up a few things. So. We're gonna go for like a few rows of towers here uh, with a little bit of space between them. We're gonna do that. Oh, let's get the music going again. It always takes a while for the music to show up. And we're gonna just do like three rows of walls. And before anything, let's just get people moving in. Oh, road there, road here, road here, road here road here, road here. And by the way, as an extra challenge on holding off this invasion, I'm going to make it so that... Uh, actually, let's, let's shift this a little bit further forward. I'm gonna make it so that we do not micro anything. We do not micro anything for this invasion, because technically, you could use one javelin fort, and it will... Uh, it will... Uh, you can actually micro one javelin fort to kill everyone. So I'm gonna put like a house, a house, and a house. And these guys should start moving in. And just to try and make sure there's enough employment, I'm gonna double up on the housing like that. Okay, so these guys should now move there and we don't have to, these guys are already moving out by the way. Just to simulate that it can actually work, I'm gonna break this open and I'm just gonna break a couple houses down, right? Just to try and force them to move there. We'll also need to have a road connection hooking this up and a road connection coming down this way, which will hook up to here. And we'll put a gatehouse right there to make sure we don't mess up anything. Right there. Uh, we can replace that engineer's post that I destroyed. There we go. So now there's a road connection to the barracks. The barracks, by the way, is over here. And there is a road connection all the way through. Right? All of these are connected by gatehouses. So now, let's... Also, it's important to spread out how the order you place your houses. You notice I went one, two, three, one, two, three, right? And we could actually just increase it further. So there's a total of four houses to make sure everything's stable, right? Also to make sure nothing falls apart here, I will gatehouse this as well. Okay. Because they will move in in the order that you place the houses. So if you put like all the houses here and then all the houses here and then all the houses here, these guys might all move into here first. And then these two rows don't have any employment. So you gotta be careful of that. So there we go. Let's boost that up. We're gonna just put as many towers as will fit. Towers are more important than the patrolling guards. Oh, that's perfect. Fantastic. And as a backup, we're gonna have an extra couple of rows of towers. Like that, like that, okay. That's fine. That's fine. And then, to make things run even better, let's not forget putting down the engineer's posts first. Just to make sure nothing actually falls apart, I will place... Where's the road here? There. And there. 
we are then gonna spam prefectures. Because prefectures will go out and fight the enemy. And also, we are going to bring all of our soldiers down this way. While we have the chance. Now, if you just do this, enemies tend to try and run away from uh, blocked off paths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to block off this path as well. Just to make sure they don't to try and force them to come down this way, instead of going that way. We'll also try and attract them a bit with the javelins, but I don't think we'll have to. They should just, by default, go down that way. Okay, so all our troops are on the way, and then we'll just continue spamming prefectures. The more prefectures, the better. Because if they ever start busting through, the prefectures will all help fight. Okay, there we go. And we could even be more efficient by putting the houses behind the prefectures, but we, we're gonna we're gonna let it run. We're gonna let it run. Um, ah, Ritesh Aurora is in chat right now. Thank you for submitting this as an extra challenge for today. We are not gonna micro, so I'm gonna go ahead and stack our troops. Well, the javelins I'm gonna spread out, but for our uh, legionnaires, we're gonna stack up. You want to stack troops because they actually perform better. To so get them to stack as much as possible. And then we're going to try fight... Sort of close to... Not too close though. Like around there. There we go. Okay. So they're all going to move on through here. And also, just to discourage the AI from walking this way even further, I'm just gonna put another row of walls. I think that's... That's just gonna help out a bit, right? Okay, good. There we go. As far as I understand, the AI does generally prefer to walk this way. So if both walls are, exist, they will walk this way. But if you wall off here but don't wall off here, they will actually walk that way, right? Those are things you just have to test and know. Okay. So, uh, you see the homeless people are now walking over this side, and they should. It's a bit hard to show. Um, can I actually... Is there an overlay that shows houses? Not really. They should move in here, 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 here. And just as a backup... Oh, here they come, here they come. Okay, okay. And just as a backup, I will go ahead and spam couple more houses on the front row there, a couple more houses on the back row there. No room in the middle, but it's okay. So all of our troops are now coming down this way. They're gonna start spawning through. Let's move our javelins a little closer together. Uh, we'll move these guys... No, you guys move this way a bit. You guys just shift over a tiny bit. There we go. So there we go. Here comes the homeless people. Let's speed up the game a little bit to get through the trumpets. There we go. Come on, move into a house. There we go. We've got a house. Oh, I moved into that one. And you see everything just starts lighting up. All the prefects and engineers are now here. All these towers are now gonna have employment. Let's just double check. We've got 28% unemployment. Ritesh, you have to work on that. <laughs> but that's not that's not uh, the important thing right now. That's not the important thing. I don't think towers work if there's no wall space between them. Uh, the towers work fine. The ballistas spawn like that. All right, so all of these towers are now functioning, okay. Just to prioritize, since we do have infinite money, I'm going to prioritize the ones at the front. So I'm going to just temporarily demolish those and rebuild them. So the front ones get uh, put in first while we just rebuild this wall. There we go, the front ones. Because technically I also messed that up. 
the houses here are on the back row moved in first, I think. So there we go. They're just going to hang around for a while while we try and get these towers manned up. It does take a while. It takes a while. You know, you gotta, you gotta just sort of wait for that. <laughs> mm. Now this one row of towers on the front should do just fine. We do have a couple extra soldiers coming in. Do we have a full fort here? We're actually short like a couple javelins, couple legionnaires. We're actually short probably from a previous invasion. So because they, they waffle around a bit, we do actually get some time. In Pharaoh, you don't get a lot of time to to um, uh, go meet the enemy in battle. But in Caesar, they tend to just hang around for a bit before they actually do anything. So again, going to remind you guys, as a challenge, I am not going to micro anything. I'm just going to position my troops and we're just going to go for it, right? Because microing, you, I could technically like take the javelins and just micro all the way around the map and hold it forever, right? And eventually kill them, right? You could do that, you could do that. So there we go, we've got three towers manned now. The more towers we get, the better chance we've got. So technically you could uh, encourage troops to walk a certain way. For example, you could build a wall here and then leave a gap here and they'll want to walk down this way. Generally, it works like that. There's a fixed number in, of invasions. Yes, Ultimate Enforcer. Invasions are scripted. All invasions are scripted. The only game in the Old Impression series where the invasions are not fully scripted is Emperor. They have like random start locations and based on relations and your military size, it actually encourages or discourages invasions. But in Caesar 3 and Pharaoh, at least, they are 100% scripted. I'm not sure about Zeus. I think they are still scripted in Zeus, but I'm not too sure. But in Emperor, they're actually dynamic. Zeus is somewhat similar to this. Reminds me of Rimworld Killbox. Yes, it's something like that. I think my positioning is okay. I might want to just stack my javelins a bit there to try and encourage them all to sort of walk through here. There we go. Most of the towers are functioning here. We'll speed it up a little bit just to make sure things get going. Once most of the towers are filled, I'm going to go replace these. I, I'm pretty sure I could just place these down now. There we go. Two towers left. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and place these towers as a backup. I don't think I'm going to need these back towers, but I'm putting them down anyway. So, there is another invasion coming in a year, but don't worry, don't worry. And I know it says uh, tower must be next to a wall to send out a patrol. We don't care about patrols, I'd rather have another ballista, okay? It's nice if you have the space to put patrols and stuff, but in this little ravine, you just want ballista firing down, especially against elephants. The javelins don't do too much. Now, if you were to micro this, you could send out javelins and, like, start shooting one infantry fort and pull them down and you could like kill them one at a time you could kill them one at a time right so i could for example pull like one legion over kill it pull one legion over kill it pull one legion over and i would lose almost no troops i would lose almost no troops uh the carthaginians shuffle says blue shader yeah so eventually these guys are actually gonna attack And here they come, up, up. They shuffle a bit more, they shuffle a bit more. All the towers on the front row are now filled. Come on, come on. A bit more, a bit more. There we go, that's gonna start attracting them. That's gonna pull them in for sure. No, no, okay, here we go, here we go. Again, no micro. I'm not gonna micro these javelins or anything. Here they come, here they come. So see those diamonds? They just march right through. And see the prefects running out? Seeing the prefects run out? They're just gonna help out. Prefects don't do much against proper soldiers like this, but just a pile of skeletons, look at that. 
So here comes everything, everything. We're gonna lose a lot of troops not microing like this. We're gonna lose a lot of troops. But I'm pretty confident they will not bust through. Oh, there's diamonds. Those diamonds are tough. And we survive. See, Prefect's still fighting out out there. Some of the prefects chasing, look at that. No, sign of crime around here. no crime, but uh... <laughs> and we win, we win. See? You can totally hold it off, but look at our troops. 0, 0, 11, 8, 0, 0. It's terrible, it's terrible, right? If you, so, so that, that's basically no micro, right? We had one month warning from the start of the save, and uh, Suleiman, Heading on out there. We had one month warning and we just set up this defenses by using a couple tricks very, very quickly. Got it set up. Right? I like how the food tr uh, fort troops. What? Fort of troops zero, badly shaken. Oh, yeah, they were they're just sort of shaken. Ooh, there's none left. We're all dead. We're a bit shaken. We're a bit shaken. So, to compare that, what I can do is I'm just gonna go ahead and load that up again. And I'm going to do some micro. So because I'm going to micro, I'm just going to need one row of towers here, right? And I'm going to go through this a bit quicker because we know what we're doing now. Just put that there. Just put that there. Get a bunch of prefectures down. Leave one gap to make sure things can actually get through. So now I'm gonna do the same thing, but do a bit of micro, right? That was no micro. So that's basically the worst possible outcome, right? Uh, engineer's post. There we go. Towers. Just fill the wall as much as possible. Okay. We need to move that. Uh, we're gonna need a gate house like that. That road does connect. Hook this up. Uh, let's gatehouse this properly and replace that engineer's post. Okay, so these guys are now gonna move into there, get that all working. And we're gonna micro this time, so... Uh, yeah, we, we could send these guys over, like, about now. So we're still gonna stack the legions. And actually, I should probably set these guys to the square formation. So we don't have to worry too as much about positioning because we're gonna lure them with our javelins this time and you guys are just gonna sit right here and you guys are you the fish you are the fish you are gonna sit right here we're gonna try to lure them as quickly as possible well maybe not as quickly as possible so let's speed this up homeless people go walk over there please yep thank you very much so there we go all of this is now functioning So we'll let them spawn in first. Wait for some towers to get working. There we go, some towers are now working. I'm gonna try shift those guys back a bit. So now, let's try lure one group over. I'm not too concerned about losing javelins this time around. Okay, so that's taken out one group. 
Let's send the javelins back out. You know, just in case, I'm gonna... Just spread out some of these guys. There we go. Alright, let's try lure some elephants down, yeah? Come on, come on. So once you aggro them, you can actually lure them in. Just make sure you run away in time. Right? If you can pull off one elephant group by itself, you can actually do quite a bit of damage. Like it's, it's nice to pick them off without the infantry coming in as well, because the towers one-shot the elephants. So we don't even have all the towers functioning right now. The prefects are great at stopping a soldier so that the ballista can shoot him. There we go. Let's lure the next group in. Prefect's doing some work there. <laughs> Alright, come on. Here they come. Next group. And see, when you lure them and do a bit of micro, you can actually just pull them in one at a time. And we'll see the comparison for losses. I'm not even microing like a lot this time around. We're just doing the basic micro. And the last group joins the fray. And finally all the towers are functioning. And also, as a note, we didn't have to build a wall there because we manually lured their, them in, right? We manually lured them in. So this is the largest invasion on this map. So just to compare, it used to be what? 0, 0, 11, 5, 0, 0. This time around, it's 4, 3, 13, 15, 1, 4. So it's still not a great outcome, but so much better. And the invasion's over. It takes so much less time. So we have a year to rebuild, but the next invasion is not as bad, right? That was the largest invasion year 204 BC. Well, it's now 203, but 204. And that that gives you time to just build up more walls and stuff. You, you should probably build a wall here as well, you know, um, just have walls on both sides. Prefects are great at just spamming out some troops, but yeah. That's how you hold off these invasions. A few, a few nice tricks. A few, a few nice tricks like uh, using the homeless people is great. Uh, there's the sentries coming along. Uh, you uh, like re-diverting -di the homeless people. It's very handy. See, you just destroy a house, put down some houses, and he's just gonna walk right over here. You can always replace this house like that. But he's already heading to one of these new houses. So it's it's great way of just very quickly connecting an area and setting things up immediately. Oh, I think because I built that, he <laughs> he actually uh, despawned there. There we go. So this trick right here. There we go. Quick way of getting an area set up and running. Right? It's good, good. So that's basically it. That's how you save Ritesh's city. Um, even with minimal warning, you can hold off the largest invasion on this map if you have a re like generally full company of forts. We, we didn't even start with full troops. We were shot by a few javelins, few legions. Um, and that also shows a nice difference of micro. A bit of micro goes a long way, you know? Otherwise, I think we, we only had like um, what, 11 plus 5, so 16 troops left over last time. A lot better this time. At least there's some legions left over. <laughs> All right. So yeah, that, that's how you hold off an invasion. Ritesh just needed help with an invasion? Yeah, it is the largest invasion on Mediolanum. And that basically means it's... Probably not the largest invasion in the game, but it's one of the largest. It's one of the largest, right? So yeah, that's today's city building doctor episode i know it's a relatively short one but i'm actually very tired now uh so <laughs> thank you for joining that uh, we'll, we'll, i'm pretty sure you pretty much get the idea okay good good
So, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Do check out the rest of the City Building Doctor series and the rest of the Caesar 3 series, especially the new playthrough on Very Hard. I do some crazy blocks. I do animal blocks. I do 3D blocks. I do crazy things. Crazy things there. Anyway, that's going to be it for this episode of City Building Doctor. My name is Gamerzak, your doctor for today. And I'll see you next time. Bye.